Hey guys, it's a market update. This is it right now. We have less than 50 days until the ETFs are approved or denied. The market thinks they will be approved. That is why we're seeing this grind higher, but there is going to be huge volatility around this event, right? Either way, we just don't know if they're gonna be approved or denied, but there are many things behind the scenes that uh, are very positive towards this, which is why the market is pushing us higher. You can see this, this grinding of price action up here. Many people saying that we're rejecting off this 38 level, one, two, three, four times, and that's bearish. But you look at the, the other side of it and the market is just buying this trend line the whole entire way. Now, this is massive resistance. You can see that here. Okay, so we're not gonna break through this unless something specifically and fundamentally changes, and that is, of course, the ETF. But we are pricing in perfection right here, right? We are testing this resistance, and so the market is saying to itself, we think this is going to happen. So if it doesn't, or if there are rumors that it's not gonna be accepted around here, the end of December, then we're clearly gonna just drop through all of this and maybe even test these lows, uh, kind of 31, 32. The market thinks we're getting approved though. And so let's look into that. If you're a trader, check out Bybit, uh, link in description. Uh, just make a deposit, trade on Bybit. Uh, you can get up to $30,000 as a deposit bonus. Bybit's my main exchange. Um, I use them, so you know you can check them out. We need to talk about Grayscale though. People are of course looking into every technical detail about what these companies are applying for and what they're doing behind the scenes. So this is an agreement between Grayscale and BNY Mellon. Grayscale won their case against the SEC. The, you know, a court of law said the SEC has no legal reason to deny these spot ETFs. So now we're really just onto technicals and timelines. The timeline of 10th of Jan may be still too early for the SEC to approve, but it looks like the SEC is moving on. And so that's why people are getting excited. This right here is an agreement between Grayscale and BNY Mellon. BNY are one of the biggest custodians in the world, possibly the biggest. Uh, so they hold a lot of these assets for the financial institutions. Um, so what they're doing here is an agreement to facilitate the issuance and redemption of shares of the trust. Now people are reading that into redemption of shares because if Grayscale currently is a trust structure right now, they would have to redeem those shares when they convert it to an ETF. So people are reading into this. Now, if we look at some of the comments here, this is the Bloomberg analyst who you know knows what he's talking about with these things. He's saying that this is you know kind of par for the course. However, you know events of the last few days haven't changed my and his fellow Bloomberg analyst odds. We can't go any higher than ninety percent by the uh, Jan tenth. That said, things are continuing to move forward in our view. The SEC and other powers within America are, are never going to let the ETF launch when Binance had all of the trade volume. It is absolutely incomprehensible for, you know, the powers that be to let a US retail product start trading when all of the trade volume and price discovery of that asset is in some, you know, private company outside of the US. It is absolutely impossible for them to accept that. What they've decided to do is bring all of these cases and bring the trading and, uh, you know, volume onshore into the states to actually launch these products. Now the CME is now doing a ton of futures volume, which is price discovery. And you know, you've seen all of these actions against Binance. For a lot of people that actually had to be resolved before the ETF could be accepted. All of these things are actually happening. I think the Binance news is actually the best news we could have got. Binance, you know, essentially was having an infraction of KYC AML, which every single international bank has done in the past as well, right? And so they, were, they weren't a fraud, they weren't stealing money, they're not insolvent, they weren't an FTX. But all of this stuff had to be, you know, cast aside and put to the kind of history books because the ETF won't be allowed until the Bitcoin trading is kind of onshore in the States. It's a US product that they're launching and they need all of that in the States. It's happening now. I don't know if the 10th of Jan is enough time, um, but everything is falling into place. And so the market thinks this, and that is why we're just not gonna go lower, uh, considerably lower, until the market thinks that something has changed. And for right now, they don't. But this is very, very pivotal as a time because we don't know what's gonna happen. So just hold on to your hats over the next you know, 50 days. Another pivotal part of this Bitcoin cycle that will drive us to new all-time highs must be 
much looser financial conditions. This is still something we have to work through. So there is still a you know, downturn and recession that has to happen first with higher unemployment, and then the central banks can start to be a bit easier. So you can see like, we've just done so well, right? You can see this huge recovery from the lows. So this is great. But, you know, we're getting into territory now where the price is obviously pricing in a lot of good news. And so just to be careful because bad news could obviously derail us. However, we've got a Bitcoin halving here. And then we have at some time during, you know, mid 2024, the market expecting rate cuts. So let's have a look at that. This is uh, the joblessness rate. And you can see in blue here in 2023, we're just starting to tick up. This is both in uh, continuing claims and initial claims. So the usual way that this goes is that, you know, towards the end week of year, you get this kind of uptick. You also get an uptick in uh, initial claims as well. Now, why that's important is because the Fed are really just going to stay kind of mostly hawkish or they're definitely not going to drop rates until the um, unemployment rate ticks higher. Once unemployment starts going higher and they can see that, then they can actually start to think about cutting rates. That's not going to happen, in my opinion, for maybe another four to six months, maybe longer than that. The usual time, the kind of average or median time between the last rate hike and the first rate cut is six months. Now, the Fed is saying higher for longer, but I don't believe that at all. They're going to be high for an amount of time that is necessary until unemployment starts ticking higher considerably. So the market, as you can see here, essentially these are all of the times when they're pricing in rate cuts. The latest market curve is right here, which is actually pricing in higher for longer. And so the rates, rates are pricing this in. And so if we get any weakness in the economy, then we could actually you know, be looking at kind of a faster uh, rate, rate uh, cuts right here. This isn't going to happen. This rate curve is just essentially what the Fed is trying to make itself. They're trying to force the market into some way. As you can see, once the Fed start cutting, you know, it, it's quick. It's not this slow. It's not going to happen this slow. They're going to keep it up here for like six months. So they're going to keep it here. And then suddenly they're just going to start cutting and it's going to be fast when it happens. When that happens, that's the new all time high for Bitcoin because Bitcoin trades off of this. It trades off of, you know, the money supply rates when they're cutting rates and stimulating the economy, wherever that may come, that is when Bitcoin has its big, you know, moves to the upside. And so that is what I'm trading. So the ETFs are a great start. It may derail us. And if we don't get them and we get a huge dump, great opportunity, in my opinion, to actually buy because the real thing is that Bitcoin versus the US dollar, Bitcoin is going to win because we know the debt construct. We know that they have to refinance at lower rates. We know that's going to happen. That is just pure mass. And so that's actually what I'm trading. The ETF is, you know, actually a sideshow, in my opinion. And if we do get a denial, absolutely great news to pick up some cheaper Bitcoin. The Bitcoin cycle is playing out. We can see this in real time. This is obviously the macro cycle as well. But, you know, as someone who maybe has some spare cash to invest in something, you know, you don't want to become a, a bond trader or try and, you know, take leverage positions going long, short bonds and trying to trade and make money. Most people have that cash. They want to put it aside and they want to invest in something that grows over time, but is a strong asset. Bitcoin is that, in my opinion. We can see this rate cycle playing out, right? So the Bitcoin all time high is long term holder spending and profitability. Bitcoin all time high right here. You can see the euphoria stage that kind of dips out and you know that's the kind of end of the, the bull market then as you go into this transition right so you're coming from the euphoria stage into transition as rate height as rate hikes were happening as money was getting tightened right the fed was drawing that money out and so you're getting that equilibrium down into a transition down into a capitulation you can see it doesn't happen in these very you know, nice, neat ways. You know, that's not what the market does. You get these periods where you get these huge capitulations, you get periods of transition, you know, and so you have to be, you know, very diligent in where you're investing and just, you know, be confident in the asset you're investing in, that Bitcoin is stronger than the dollar, it's valued in the dollar. And so, you know, where else can it go other than up with volatility? If the network continues to grow, which fundamental data shows that it is. So you have this transition, you have this capitulation. Now we're moving back into transition. Now we're moving back into equilibrium. So you can see that happen here, the drawdown, the capitulation, and now the recovery. So that's what's happening. As you can see, it's not a straight line and it's very, very noisy, 
But you know, investors that want to invest to, throughout the bottom end of a price cycle, just invest through this and whole entire thing, get a decent average price, and then you know, wait for that real bull market and they can make decisions. Do you wanna sell some and take profits? Do you wanna scale back your buyers? Do you just wanna wait? You know, just do you wanna keep buying because you're in it for the next two or three cycles? That's up to the individual. Exciting times and a lot of volatility is gonna happen over the next few months, but that's why we're in crypto, right? If you are a trader, check out the Bybit deposit bonus. Also the crypto investor course, I'm gonna be updating it throughout the end of this year. All updates come for free for existing users. Link below. I'm James, this is Money ZG. Cheers for watching and I'll see you in the next one.